Hello and welcome to Ask Your Lecturer series. This is a session where students sit with Mwalimu and ask relevant questions. And I'm always happy to give insights on the various uh, discussion topics that may come up. Today we have an interesting topic, but let me allow my student to introduce himself and then we go right into it. Karibu. <laughs> Hello, and uh, thank you first for the good introduction you have done to me. Uh, my name is Frederick Mwangi, and today, as you can see, we have prepared uh, a good topic for you. And we are going to see, we are going to talk about how students uh, have managed to do the, uh, to deal with their problems, how they interact, and how they get solutions to different challenges they face in life. Thank you. Um, yes, as a, as a lecturer, mm. I wear many hats. I also wear another hat of uh, a counselor. Mm. And I believe I'm also a friend to many mm. and a father figure. And that's why, as you rightfully say, I have access to students who want to see me to ask various questions about uh, the academic journey, challenges they face in life, and also those who have other uh, issues that they would like uh, a mature approach to mm -hmm. it. So uh, you have jo you joined the uh, NIPS Technical College in a period of like, uh, now let's say four months. Yes, and uh, How can you describe the way you are? the four months you have been in NIPS Technical College. How can you describe the four months? Oh, interesting. Um, well, obviously in the first, the, the, the first uh, few months are always uh, a time of uh, knowing your way around, finding out um, the culture of a place. Every, every institution or every home or everywhere where there are human beings, there is a culture there. So first of all, you have to go in and learn the people, learn the culture, understand your job description, and then find out your approach, how you're going to go about it. So that's the first thing I did. And I can say I received a lot of support from the management, from my colleagues, from fellow lecturers, from the HOD. Uh, but I must say most importantly, I commend the students. I feel that I, I blended in very well with them. Uh, in the beginning, they didn't know who I was, but uh, slowly by slowly, we began the interaction. Uh, uh, maybe you can uh, mention uh, if there is uh, any comparison between where you worked earlier and uh, how, you, how you are working in NIBS. Is there any comparison? Is there any difference, maybe positive or negative? Well, all I can say is that um, every institution is different. I've taught in um, about four or five institutions. But one thing in common is that I deal with young people and I deal with students. And students have a lot of similarities. And so students here or students in any other institutions that I have taught are no different because they're all young adults. And the challenges that you find in young adults across, mm. there are many similarities. So there's nothing new I'm finding here with students. It's just a different approach. And, uh, you know, social challenges are individual. So the individuals whom I meet, I handle them individually. Those that come as a group, I do a lot of, uh, you're well aware of this, I do a lot of uh, inspirational and motivational talks. So there's, there's a place to speak to groups and there's also a place to speak to individuals. And uh, after you have interacted with many students, you have said you have worked in four institutions. Yes. Counting this or this the fifth? Uh, this one, including this one. So the, those are four institutions. Yes. Can you say the interaction with students have developed you or have developed your growth personally, professionally? And in a professional career? Yes, I can say that to a large extent, yes. Now, remember, as a, as a trainer 
or as a counselor, you have a career. That is a career. Mm -hmm. And you're growing and developing. And the way you grow in a, any career is by going into new uncharted grounds or teaching in new places or facing new challenges. That's how you grow. And in the process, obviously, you make some mistakes, uh, you learn from them, and then you progress on. So yes, it has been a career journey for me. And over the years, you find that you have gained a lot of experience. So you're able to handle quite a number of challenges that come. I can tell you now without any hesitation, there's nothing that I haven't come across from any student. So there's nothing that shocks me. Uh -huh. So a student may come and think that whatever they are going through is something very heavy or very big. And um, I just take them uh, as they are at an individual level. And we handle the issue that they are going through. And we usually have a lot of success. Oh, yeah, I understand. Yeah. And uh, when you came in, when you were stationed in this school. Yes. And uh, you were stationed there. Uh, around the studio. Yes. And uh, many students would ask uh, who who is that, who is that, who is that? That's and right. uh, the answer would be this is the head of the studio mm -hmm. of operations. Yes. And then you interacted with students, you interacted me and they are in classes that is teaching, mm -hmm. like some of them you taught them uh, life skills. Yes. And there was no mention of uh, you being a motivational speaker or uh, cancer. Yes. And how did that character portray itself? How did it come out that students realize that you, they can get advice from you? One thing I may want to mention is um, everybody has their unique personality. So w when I came into class, I was coming into class to teach. So I was wearing my hat of Malimo. So I came to teach. But in the process, obviously, students picked up that uh, this is somebody you could approach. Because every lecturer or every trainer has their own unique style. I have my unique style as well. I use a friendly approach, but professional. So that students realize that this is a, a professional who is knowledgeable, but I also give assurance. And that's where students realize that you can approach this person. So as you said, I also realized that I can tell because I can read a lot of non-verbals. Students would look across the window and I could see from the look on their faces. They were wondering, who is this person and what does he do there? But when we started interacting in class, in the classroom, and as they heard me speak, so they realized that this is somebody that you can approach. And uh, that's where people started coming in. And uh, w what is your aim? Because uh, if you, when students approach you, you may be giving them advices. Okay, maybe sometimes the students may prefer not to come, mm -hmm. no, never to come back again. But they, the more the shortest period of being here, many students have seen approaching. It is like there is someone doing the recommendation mm -hmm. when you talk to someone. Yes. Do you have a specific aim that you have? to their career, or to their success in life? Yes, of course. Um, obviously, the bigger picture for me is to, or my greatest joy, mm. is to see students succeed. And su success for a student is broad-based. It's not only academic. And that's why you notice I don't focus only on academics. Mm. I also talk about life skills. I talk about uh, personal development, I talk about personality, I talk about so the, the entire wellness of a student. So for me, my greater goal is to see every student I interact with grow and develop as an individual because everybody has uh, a goal. And uh, even those students I ask, you, you notice in very many of those forums, I ask mm -hmm. students, what are you going to do in the next three years? What are you going to do after you acquire this diploma? So for those who don't know, I help trigger uh, some thinking so that you can start setting goals, so that you can start seeing beyond the diploma and you can look a little ahead. That's to help students uh, develop personally because there is life after your diploma program. So you have to start thinking about that now.
so that you can plan for it. Because success is not an accident. Success is a series of well-planned events. So if you haven't thought about it, there's nothing wrong with that. But Mwadimu comes in to help trigger that, to help you start thinking about your life. Yeah, uh, Mr. Sam, uh, yes. I may ask, uh, if, okay, I may first call and say that every, even the easiest fields, yes, even cooking, there yes. are many, many challenges that yes. we encounter. Mm-hmm. Do you have some of the, of course you encounter challenges dealing with, more so dealing with students, mm-hmm. but they doesn't seem to bother you. What are some of the challenges that you may encounter in, or that you encounter in New York? Well, um, challenges in life are normal. Now, to answer your question is, um, you see, as, as you mature in age, you realize that there is nothing new under the sun. So for me, I'll tell you right now in my life, nothing can shock me. Because I've been through many of the challenges the youth are going through. I've been through many of the challenges adults go through. And for me as a mature adult at Generation X, there are very few things I haven't gone through myself. So I have learned in life that you need a level head when the challenges come, because challenges will come. That one is guaranteed in life. So when they do come, how will you approach them? And that's why you notice for every student who comes, nothing shocks me. If you tell me you're pregnant, I've handled many students who are pregnant. If you have a drug problem, it's new to you, so we'll handle it as that. But to me, it's not new. So um, challenges are there. They come in form of, um, obviously, in a new environment. Let me use that example. The... um, it will take time to fit in. Because as I said, every, every organization has a different culture, a different setting. So it will take you time to assimilate and uh, to get blended into the system. Um, but obviously, due to experience, you will know how to maneuver and uh, settle in. The always challenges will always come. You might have, you might find it, that it's uh, it's not very smooth uh, finding out, say, the leadership's expectations, mm-hmm. your style of doing things and their style of doing things. So that may take a while before uh, you smoothen things out. And uh, do you have an approach? Or the, basically this question is just about yeah. the solutions that you... My approach is a mature professional approach. And that one works everywhere. It deals with them even with the challenges. Even with the challenges. Mm -hmm. Whether you're dealing with students, whether you're dealing with management, whether you're dealing with institutions, if you you promote uh, best practice and professionalism, you will overcome most of the challenges. Because most of the challenges would come, say, through communication barriers. Now, if you use professionalism, that means you use the proper channels, you speak to the right people, you use the right channels, say whether it's email, and they're all professional. Then you find most of the challenges at that level uh, are overcome. Yeah, um, I tend to think that uh, many students have succeeded through your hands. Yes. I, do you have any comment about that? Maybe how you feel when you see a successful well, student? Well, it's, um, it's very humbling. Uh, to see uh, students succeed Mm. and there are many that I I can quote who are already serving in many uh, media organizations. Um, For those of us even here who have gone through uh, where we have visited various uh, media houses in our academic trips. Each time I go to each of them and take students, I find students working there whom I have taught. And then in each of those media houses, I find colleagues whom I worked with a long time ago. So all those are very nostalgic and uh, humbling moments for me. So at least I know what I'm doing is not in vain. 
and that is um, a great fulfillment for any trainer to have trained and mentored and seen the results oh yeah uh, yes. if i may ask have you ever had uh, do you have any achievement that you want to accomplish with students that you have not yet accomplished not quite but um the way i would answer that is for everywhere every station that i work mm. for every institution that i work like this one my aim and goal is to see most of the students i interact with succeed and that's why i spend a lot of time with them and that's why i have an open door policy my door is always open and i always invite them to come in because many get inspired at an individual level so that's what i would say that's what i want to accomplish to see as many students succeed for for their own good mm. and for their own career development and uh, for any uh, where as we conclude uh, yes what are the what is the general what are the general tips that mm -hmm. you can give to a student who maybe is watching mm -hmm. live to make him or her prosper and be successful to pursue college life oh to the students out there um wherever you are i would mention five key areas mm -hmm. Number one, take your studies seriously. Um, work hard, read, and don't only read what is taught in class. The syllabus is good in all institutions, whether locally or abroad, but you, you as a student are as good as your own personal initiative. So I always encourage students, read more than is being taught. Gain an interest. Say, journalism is a very broad field. So, for example, look for a field that you're interested in, like investigative journalism, and read more about it. There's so many resources now and uh, clips you can watch uh, on YouTube to grow. Develop an interest. What do you want to do with your diploma? Or what do you want to do with your career? So start thinking about your career development now. And then think about other areas, other areas of interest that you can combine with what you're doing. For example, if you're a journalist, you may think of doing a foreign language. That would give you more options to make you a foreign journalist or an English speaking journalist in Kiswahili and a vernacular uh, language and one of the UN languages, mm -hmm. either German or Chinese, Mandarin or any of those UN languages. That would make you marketable. And then I'd tell um, the Gen Zs because it's you guys, the, mm -hmm. the younger generation. Yeah. Um, do what you need to do early. I say that as, as a parent and as a mentor. Get, get done with your experiments, experimentation stage early. You know, as we call it, ticking the boxes. So by the time you're a ad young adult, yeah, you should have done all those little things that you want to try out so you know what works for you and what doesn't work for you. And then remember, and young people forget this often, that the internet doesn't forget. So don't do silly things on the internet. It may cost you in the future. Or whatever you do that's not really pleasant, which mm. falls under your social activities, don't cover most of that and don't post it. Because some of those things may come to haunt you later on in life. And finally, I would ask you young students, get a mentor. Mm. Look for a mentor who can mentor you. A mentor is somebody who's ordinarily who is older than you, who has seen a little more than you. That way you'll be able to make sound decisions, to be one step ahead and never be afraid to ask. That's what I would sum up. So those are tips. the things. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so the tips you have said is uh, make effort in your studies. Yes, and read beyond what you're read being taught. Read beyond what you're taught. Yes. Combine interest. Yes. That is be a, be an asset. Yes. That you can, if you, for, for the example that you have given. Yes. You can combine two courses that you have done. Yes, and learn something that many students are not learning. 
like a foreign language. So in short, you uh, it's like you're saying, be unique. Yes, be different because right now you're doing journalism mm. and there are so many journalism students in this country. So what's going to make you different from the rest? If you've done ICM, there are 40,000 out there who've done ICM. If you have a distinction, there are 20,000 who have distinctions. What will make you different from them? But if you have a distinction and you have a foreign language and you've done unique stories and you want to be an investigative journalist, uh, say in the counties, and you're doing stories that aren't covered by the mainstream media, already you begin to stand out. So you have to look for ways of standing out because it is very competitive. The media field is very competitive. So unless you stand out, um, it will be very difficult for you to penetrate. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, to the student uh, back there at home, I think you have uh, had your words. What you have to do to be successful? Tips, you have more than five tips, we have said. Be an asset, more so that one, because that is repeated everywhere we visit. By the way, you took a, you took a group of students in uh, RMS, Royal yes. Media Services. Yes. They were asked about uh, what they were taught there, or what they learned there. Yes. They learned that you have to be an asset, just the way you have said. Be yes. an asset. Combine skill. Combine interest yes. of all what you have. So thank you guys. That is all we have for today. I think uh, this show was interesting to you. I hope it was educative to you, informative. And next time I'll be cooking something and I'll be bringing it to you. Thank you guys. See you next time. Thank you very much.